You know, you know, I visit to South Africa continuously. I've been to South Africa many, many times. You know, I mean, last year we did a poetry tour, Africa Poetry, Poetry Africa. We went to South Africa, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. You know, and so in, over the years we've been going there, we developed a relationship with a bridge named Lucky Dube, who, is, who used reggae music to project his message of hope and salvation. And we develop a kind of friendship, Lucky Dube, you know. And um, I remember one time I was, uh, somebody, I was in Montreal and somebody told me that Lucky Dube was, was performing in Montreal and I went there standing in the audience. And out of nowhere I heard Lucky Dube talking about Muta Baruka on the stage, not knowing that I was there. So I was really taken aback because I said, wow, you this bridging doing him show. And him is now talking about Muta Baruka on the stage. So those kind of experiences give you a kind of nearness and a kinship with the brethren. I was in England and I was going on the stage and just I was about to go on the stage. Somebody called me and said, guess what? Them shot Lucky Dube. I said, them kill Lucky Dube. They said, yeah, them kill Lucky Dube. And right away, I feel so distressed. We went on the stage and all we could talk about was Lucky Dube. You know, because we see and recognize Lucky Dube because he's the only, we would have called, non-Jamaican who continuously use reggae music because you have other artists Alpha Blande and you know Salif Kate and all these people who use reggae music but Lucky Dube only use reggae music and it, it gives him a space in the arts of the Jamaican people to say here's an African using reggae music and has gotten over with the reggae music. So it really touched me. So my last album that was distributed in South Africa, um, we had a tribute for Lucky Dube on the album. And don't ask me to do it because I don't remember the words. <laughs> When did you decide to change from Zulu Mbwenga, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> Mbwenga. Mbwenga. Yeah. <laughs> to reggae. Well, I think it happened about uh, 1984. That was the, the first time I released a reggae album. But from 1979 up to 1984, I was doing uh, Mbwenga. The change came in 1984. So exactly what is that? I mean, it's like Hugh Masekela's music was years ago and the people who did Serafina and stuff like that? Well, yes, the Serafina type uh, style, yes. And Mashatini and them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was the kind of music I was doing before. Did you dance with it as well? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, that's, that's where maybe um, the dancing started, you know, because you, could, you cannot just do that music without dancing because it's... It's just um, very vibey music and it's got a nice beat to it and you, you have to dance, you know. So I was dancing, you know, quite a lot, you know, even then. Since the change uh, from uh, apartheid to struggling toward non-apartheid system in South mm -hmm. Africa, what's life been like for you? What's, what's the difference? Do you see a difference in your life and the lifestyle of your friends and relatives? Well, so far, politically, there hasn't been any really, like, big change, except for the fact that, um, as a musician, I now have, like, um, the right to sing and talk about anything that I want to sing and talk about without any fear of being arrested or chased around with police, you know, and, and stuff like that. I can sing and talk about whatever I want to sing and talk mm -hmm. about with no fear. So you, have you put on uh, performances there in South Africa? Yeah. In Johannesburg or Solidar? Yeah, around around Johannesburg, and I've done um, some shows in Natal, um, which is the Zululand uh, side of it. Hmm. So yeah. are you Zulu? No. What is what is? What? I am just um, human. <laughs> okay. I like that. What is happening to that Sun City that was so popular for a while that that, that there was? 
Well, it is still it is still very popular, but now the thing is that um, Mangope is no more there. The the president Mangope is no more there, so that has been I think taken back into um, South Africa, which is you know it it was South Africa before, but uh, apparently people were not happy there about Mangope and um, people. When voting, when the whole of South Africa was voting, the people in Botswana wanted to to vote as well, but Mangope wouldn't let them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe that's when the people decided they don't want him anymore. Mm. But it's still popular. The name Lucky Dube. Uh, someone mentioned to me that it has dub in it. Mm. <laughs> I, I said, hey, I didn't think about that because they said, well, how do you pronounce it? Uh, so how did you get the name Lucky Dube? Well, Lucky is my name, you know, like James, and Dube is my last name, as in Hanson. I got the name Lucky because um, my mother didn't have children for a long time, and uh, finally she got a boy, and um, when he was about uh, three months, he got very sick and he died. And so when I was born, I mean, there was that little break again, long break. And when my mother finally got me, I also got sick, very sick, and they thought I'm going to die too. And so I didn't have a name until I was maybe about, what, six months old. They would just call me the boy or the child. And um, then I didn't die, and so they said, well, he's very lucky, he's a very lucky boy, and they called me Lucky, hmm. and that's how I got the name Lucky, but Dube is my last name. Who is Lucky Dube? Who is Lucky Dube? <laughs> lucky Dube is a singer from South Africa, he is trying to make sense out of life, trying to send a message across to people everywhere in the world and uh, calling for unity amongst people, not just black people, but white people, green people, whatever people there are. That's who Lucky Dube is trying to bring together. What is the hope of your music? The hope of the music is, of course, um, that of, of getting people together. People have been separated for a long time. and. Um, I do music for three reasons. I do music to entertain, to educate, and to unite people. That is me and my music. Speak on your influence of Peter Tosh. What influence Tosh has had on you and your music? Well, Peter Tosh was basically the reason really behind my getting into reggae because when I first heard Peter Tosh, I, I really liked his music and I liked his message. Basically, everything about Peter Tosh really was, was great. He is still, even today, the foundation of what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. Well, when did you become a Rasta and why? Um, when I was doing Standard 8 at school, I was doing some work in the library, in the school's library, and that's when I started, um, I found an encyclopedia that was talking about reggae music and about Rastafarianism, and I just liked um, the way of life. What I read about was Rastafarianism being a way of life, not a religion, and um, that's what I, I really liked, just the way of life. You know, even though today being a Rasta means smoking ganja and meaning that uh, to have dreadlocks and, and play reggae music uh, to some people, that's what being a Rasta means, you know. What does it mean to you? To me, it's about consciousness, be it socially or politically, you know, it's, it's basically consciousness. Speak on your social... Um the social things you speak about in your music, the racial stereotypes, the assumptions that people make, how do you bring that out into your, in your music? Well, I write my music about people, 
um, I write my music about myself. I write music about real things that are happening, you know, to real people. There's no song that I have written that is um, just an imaginary thing, you know. So all the things that I write about are things that people relate to, are things that have happened to people one time or another. You mentioned on a little article that I read that by the time you come off your tour, you had all the music ready for Trinity. Yeah. What inspires you doing that tour? I mean, how does you get it together? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're so busy doing this tour. How do you have time to sit and put music together to arrange it and all that stuff? Well, um, I think that's about the best time of writing my music because I meet a lot of um, different people, uh, different cultures and, and stuff and that's that's where the inspiration comes from because I write my songs about people and so meeting different people kind of inspires you know me quite a lot mm -hmm. yeah and like now Trinity is out but I have already started writing material for for the next album yeah. what is the concept of Trinity Trinity talks about education uh, I found that in South Africa with the new government to me it meant time for education black people were going to educate white people and white people were going to educate black people because we did not really know much about each other in the past except the fact that black people thought of white people as oppressors and white people thought of black people as criminals and so with trinity like i said it's the three reasons that i do music to educate to entertain and to unite but trinity comes in with the education part now where we're going to educate each other about the different cultures that we have about all the different things that we have about each other, not just criminals and oppressors. Mm -hmm. Trinity is about education. So will your next album take up one of the other concepts or will it continue in the education, the one you're working on while you're on the road now? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know, <laughs> but um, at the moment I'm just putting material together and um, yeah, whatever ideas that are coming in, and whatever I see happening, you know, but I wouldn't know what the album will be about until it's done, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, because that's how it has always worked over the years. I want to compliment mm -hmm. you on Trinity too. I find it's, um, I have a couple of your other albums, I mean, um, mm -hmm. but this one I find is one that every song I like. You know, not that I don't like the other songs, but oh, every song I play, I, I mean, I play the album. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person like, when I get an album, if I like it, I play it over and again. Okay. And this Trinity makes me do that. Uh, um, and, and that's quite a, I mean, I, I get a lot of music. Yeah. So it's it's a compliment to you. To ah, say thank that you it's very something much. that I definitely continue to play over and over again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where is the road taking you this, this, this tour? Well, we now have just about um, a week in America. We've been here for a, a month and a half. Okay. And uh, we just have about a, a week now left before we go back home. Uh, but we're only going back for two weeks. Um, we're going to do some shows in Botswana. And after the two weeks, we come back here again to do some shows in South America for a, a month. Great. Yeah. You know, you are one of the few reggae artists now that are really still doing roots reggae. Mm -hmm. um, Burning Spear, and I probably can name a few others, but mm -hmm. um, to me, I, I st I'm still locked into that era of music when mm -hmm. it was really roots and, you know, and, as opposed to dance hall, mm -hmm. so to speak. When you're on the road, what's the reaction to? I mean, do, do, are other people saying this to you as well? Um, Yes, yes. That they're glad to see this continuous... Yeah, that, you know, I'm still playing um, Roots music, but that that's the way um, maybe I want to keep it. And that's the way maybe this uh, Peter Toshism 
is is working you know inside me because i cannot think of any other way of expressing myself you know except the roots um style i still like the the real stuff the bob marley peter tosh um style yeah 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 i think that's going to go on <clears throat> um i'm a well i was a, a friend of peter's so i mean i'm always trying to bring more people to be aware mm -hmm. of who this person was because he doesn't get the accolades that I think he should in, yeah. in the world today. Yeah.